Gather us in the lost and forsaken. Gather us in the blind and the lame. All right, let's do this. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> back to another edition of the Uper Farmer. Uh, let's call this one the Cigar Cloud Watch, I guess. <laughs> This is very much the video that almost wasn't um, for a few reasons. One, <coughs> we are getting on and off rain with a severe thunderstorm warning. Let's see if I can get more of that, some of those thunder clouds. Hey, that's better thunder clouds over there. Um, they're coming, they're going. Let's see, is there any better angle? I think over here is probably your best angle for looking for some incoming Oop, right there. Um, so I got rained off the deck. I'm now sitting on my front porch area. Um, I couldn't find a cigar. My phone was ringing off a hook. I uh, couldn't, uh, went to go grab the bottle of uh, a beer for tonight. Couldn't find an opener. Uh, so I almost called, tapped out on this. Uh, but my wife kind of gave me the encouragement to go ahead and and shoot the video because I wanted to shoot this one before EMS week started so I could post it during EMS week. So here we are. Uh, what are we smoking when we're drinking? Oh, the camera probably won't pick this up very well. Let's see. It is the Caudwell Caudwell Blind Man's Bluff cigar. Well, a little Connecticut cigar, actually pretty good. Uh, he owns the night. And then for the beer tonight, we have Oatmeal Stout. Uh, I'm going to screw up the name. From Sclafry, S-C-H-L-A-F-L-Y. Wow. That is uh, an interesting name. A lot of vowels in there, a lot of vowels. I'm actually going to save that bottle cap because that's kind of a fun little fun little uh, name actually for a brewery, just name in general. So tonight, what are we talking about? Good question. Real quick, just in case you're curious, it's actually got a really good head of beer, but it's actually, that is a really light, light stout beer. Not a bad flavor though. A light flavor. If you could have a light, um, a light stout, you know, like a Michelob light or a Bud light, uh, this would be like the Guinness light. Uh, very light beer, uh, very easy drinking. Uh, you could easily have two or three of those ones um, in a sitting and not but that full, full stout feeling. It's interesting. Anyway, tonight we're going to talk about the EMS partner. Um, chalk this on the list of things I'll miss is having your EMS partner. Yes, also referred to as your EMS spouse because uh, you feel like you're married to these people. Uh, I have to acknowledge the elephant in the room with this one or kind of the, the joke that was funny but kind of we can't joke about anymore. Um, it's the person you run with, obviously. It's not necessarily a true partner in the relationship sense. Um, although sometimes that develops. You will have uh, people work together and then get into a relationship. It's a huge no-no. Um, don't do that. Don't try to date or marry your EMS partner. Uh, you have something different when you're on the rig compared to once you get home. Now, I'm sure there's some people who will adamantly disagree with that, but... My experience, what I've seen with people, don't, don't marry, don't sleep with, um, don't have a relationship with your EMS partner. But although I don't speak in the relationship um, realm of things, it is a marriage. It is, you know, the EMS wife, EMS husband. <clears throat> um, it's true. And again, we're bonded in very tragic events uh, when you go through a death when you go through life uh, altering life changing events um, as a team it, it bonds you it connects you it gets you closer um, 
you find yourself talking to your EMS partner about stuff you will not talk to your husband or wife about, uh, about your girlfriend or boyfriend. You're not going to talk to them. Even stuff you wouldn't dare tell your psychiatrist, your psychologist. You really start to open up to your EMS partner. Um, and I hate to say it, the bond, especially when you're working together, is almost stronger than that of your, uh, your husband or wife or boyfriend or girlfriend. Um, I think that's why there's so much infidelity and divorce in EMS. Uh, one of the jokes I, uh, I uh, heard at the fire hall, we were talking about, uh, you know, they, there's an Irish toast they had put on the wall. Here's to your wives and your girlfriends, may they never meet. Um, they were very promiscuous. It was not uncommon to have a wife, to have a girlfriend, and then to have what they called either a hose bunny or bandage bunnies or station bunnies. Um, girls who just hung around that basically got passed around the fire department. Um, I never partaked in that. <laughs> I can say that with all honesty and a straight face. I never had any interest in that. Uh, once I met my wife, I, I knew she was the one. And I had no real interest um, in those frivolous short-term relationships that were so prevalent. You do have a lot of uh, questioning of your relationship. But again, it's, it's not the same. It's not the same of, of a connection you make when you marry someone. Um, who you know you're going to go home to every single night, every single day, uh, that you know you're committed to for the rest of your life. Yeah, that person you work with on the rig, they might be with you for, you know, six weeks or six years. Um, you do get very close to them. Uh, there's no way not to. Uh, if you're going to get into EMS, you're like, well, you know, I'll, I'll keep my partner kind of at arm's length. You won't. You'll tell them your deepest, darkest secrets. They'll tell you their deepest, darkest secrets. Uh, one of the guys I worked with, um, he'd been in EMS actually longer than I had, but he worked mostly volley crews, volunteer. He came in and day one laid it all on the table. Here's what I have. This is what I'm dealing with. This is who I am. This is what I believe, this is my religious stance, this is my uh, political stance, this is my stance on this, that, and the other thing. It was, it was a breath of fresh air for sure. Um, I, I wasn't expecting that. Usually it takes a couple of uh, shifts, a few weeks perhaps, to, to get into that nitty gritty, but he's like, I've been in EMS long enough, it's gonna come out, because we're stuck together. I think we were on a six month rotation. He's like, you yeah, might as well know, okay. Cool, dude. I shared all my stuff with him too that night. A big, big chunk of it, at least. And you might be asking yourself, well, like, can you give me some examples of stuff you shared with your partner before you'd share with friends and family? Um, yeah, here's some examples. Uh, one of my partners, uh, she knew when I worked with her for seven, eight years. Um, one, we spent every Thanksgiving together. Uh, we spent most Christmases together, <laughs> how our shifts landed. Uh, we always ended up working Thursday was one of our, our uh, regular rotation day. We always ended up working Thursday every week, so we always ended up hitting Thanksgiving. Um, of course, Christmas and New Year's when they landed on Thursdays or Fridays. But uh, she knew my wife was pregnant. I told her. Before, um, before I let family know, before I let my parents know, my wife's parents didn't even know who my partner did. Um, some of the first people to see my children in hospital were my EMS partners. Um, they were the first ones to come and, and even hold my child. Uh, before family, before friends. Um, now granted, they do have a little advantage there in the hospital anyway, so just to swing up to the OB ward, um, you know, it's, it's not a big deal. Um, I told my partner on the rig that I think I needed to, I was getting burnt, and I needed to step away from the rig. I needed to, some time to reevaluate being in the U.S. full time, being on the road full time. Um, 
Yeah, I didn't talk to my wife about it first. I talked to my EMS partner about it first. I mean, that's a double-edged sword there because although my wife, as she'll put it, has put it, you know, they, she is an EMS. She was an EMSer. She had to live that life. Um, a couple of her homeschooling mom's friends would tell her, you know, she's a widow without being widowed. Um, so they'd nickname her the EMS widow uh, because she would. She was um, home alone. She was stuck, uh, stuck caring for her kids sometimes seven days a week depending on the, what was going on what disasters were happening what the scheduling was like it was her i have a lot of respect for her for that that's one of the reasons i stayed with her because she put up with that but the day i thought about quitting all together just quitting my job and ems i talked to my ems partners first um, when i made fatal calls or i made the wrong choice or mistake Guess what? Every medic does it. I don't care what they say. We all have done it. Uh, I talked with my partner first. I've had other partners come to me and tell me, you know, they're thinking about getting a divorce or thinking about having suicidal thoughts or, you know, they're planning a, a major life change and they wanted my opinion first before they asked their spouse. Kind of crazy. But again, you're spending 48 to 90 plus hours a week with these people. You sleep in the same space with them. You ride around in a truck with them. You face death with them, both other people's and sometimes your own. Um, again, I, I talked about this in an earlier video. It's no different from what I've heard. Again, I never served. But from what I've heard, it's a lot like the military. The relationship you build with someone in a foxhole and I'm not guilty of referring to the ambulance as a modern-day foxhole uh, we jump in it for protection gives us shelter allows us to do our job um, we sleep in there uh, yes we go to the bathroom in there when when stuff is getting getting hectic and getting busy uh, we mount a defense from there we make plans from there not in dissimilar to a foxhole. And sometimes they blow up too, just like in real life. Sorry, bad joke, bad joke. Um, but yeah, you're the EMS partner, I, I just, that relationship you get with someone, that connection, it's amazing. It's hard to explain unless you've been there and experienced it. Um, even people who you absolutely despise as individuals, when you're their partner, you get a, a close bond, uh, whether you like it or not. I talked about, when I talked about EMS culture, I talked about I had a partner. Um, this this uh, lady did not like me. Let's just say we didn't see eye to eye. Um, but she was one of the first people to offer help when I was going through a really tough time. Um, she gave me some advice take some of it I won't lie I took some of the advice uh, he did some of her words of, uh, of warning about uh, the path I might be going down or what I might be thinking or what I might be trying to do and I didn't take it all because some of it was bullshit but <laughs> um, yeah it's just oh the moon's poking out look at that pretty cool uh, yeah you just you, you, that connection you get I, I've never seen it in any other profession never experienced that closeness uh, with someone um, even when I was in emergency preparedness I did disaster response uh, you got a little close to people but it's not the same um, and I sat through a, a psychological uh, continuing ed we talked about resilience and they talked about how during disasters there's usually an end point like they know they can estimate when flooding will end they can estimate when the fire will be put out. Um, you can kind of give people some, some definites. But when you're working in that unknown, which EMS is, one day to the next, you don't know if you're going to have a uh, no calls. Are you going to be swamped with calls? Are you going to be 
injured? Are you going to get stabbed? Is someone going to pull a gun on you? And you don't even know if your shift is going to end. Like, you're given a, you're, you might be done at, uh, at noon, or at, uh, sorry, at seven, but you don't get out done until noon the next day. So, when you work with someone that much, that close, you're bound to build a very strong relationship. And I do miss it. Uh, I miss it from being full time on the rig or working on the ring, ha having that, that partner, someone who is stronger than family in some regards. Uh, it's closer. Uh, many, many, many of my partners I have on the rig, I am hundreds of times closer to them than I am to some of my own family members. Uh, my wife, not, you know, excluded, of course, that's the person the closest to, but again, there's some stuff I don't talk to her about. There's some stuff she doesn't want me to talk to her about. Um, she doesn't want me to come home and talk about my experiences with death and uh, dealing with dying people. Um, you know, should, that wouldn't be good on her psyche, and I understand that, respect that, I mean, that's fine. But yeah, that's something if I was to get my license, I'd miss that. I can't find that anywhere else, except for short of maybe enlisting Although I am kind of getting past my prime on that, shall we say. Yeah, I'll miss that. Uh, even just to have that opportunity taken from me would be pretty significant. So, another thing to think about, another thing to add to the pile of stuff to consider. Um, while I'm uh, debating, the month is quickly coming to a draw. Uh, EMS week is quickly coming to an end. And so... Uh, I don't have much time. I've got to make up my mind here real soon. I know how I'm leaning right now. But I went through a lot of the goods of EMS. And it's time to shift gears a little bit and uh, talk about the negatives. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, um, hope everyone's doing good out there. Hope you're enjoying EMS week and an extra slice of cake if you can. Um, yeah, and stay safe. And we'll see you on the next one.